Hello, and how's it going? In the previous video in this series, we got our app up and we got a color on the screen. Awesome. Now let's write our first shader and get a triangle on the screen. How does the programmable pipeline work? Imagine that we want to draw a triangle. We have that data in the GPU and we dispatch a graphics pipeline to draw the triangle. The data will sort of flow in one direction towards the screen. As we go along, we have what's called the vertex stage. And at the vertex stage, well, that's dispatched for each of the three corners of the triangle. And any per corner information or operations is performed at this stage. Typically, that would be applying some transformations, some rotations and translations and things. So then after we've transformed the corners at the vertex stage, we then come to something called the rasterizer because we've got our triangle, but we've just done three corners. But a triangle has a whole bunch of points and it's the job of the rasterizer to interpolate all the attributes between those points and fill in work out the individual pixels or fragments which will be the interior of that triangle. The output of the rasterizer is then passed along to the fragment stage at which point we can do per pixel operations to work out the final color for every pixel. The vertex stage and the fragment stage are programmable. We can write code to go into those stages and they are dispatched each time for little primitives. So the vertex stage runs independently once on each corner and the fragment stage runs independently once on each fragment, on each pixel. So with that explanation, let's jump in now and write a shader. We've got our project here from before. And by the way, just a side note, it's a great idea when you're working on your project to periodically be cleaning the build folder. We just go up to product, drop down menu, and then clean build folder. That's really good. Multiple times I've had errors, which were not true errors, but the build folder just needed to be cleaned. But anyway, so we'll go to a project and we'll right click and we're gonna make a new file. And we have a whole bunch of options here. I'm going to create a metal file. Metal is the file extension, which is the default for shaders. So I'll pop in here and I'll call it shaders.metal. We can really call it anything. So I'm going to define two functions. I'm going to put both my vertex shader and my fragment shader in the one file. That's fine. Totally fine. Let's say I have my vertex main. That's my shader. And then I have my fragment main over here. Those are my two functions. Now I'm going to need to qualify. This is called qualify. I'm going to need to mark these functions. So I'll put the vertex keyword out the front and that qualifies this as the vertex function. And I'll put the fragment keyword here. And this qualifies this as my fragment function. And what's going to happen is this vertex function is going to run and do its thing. But then if we look, remember, remember back to that diagram, something comes out of the vertex shader. So we need some sort of output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a struct, which will be output from the vertex main and go into the fragment main. Okay, so generally a payload is a word which means just a collection of arbitrary data. And that's pretty much what I've got here. So I'm going to output. Whoops, why can I not spell? I'm going to output a vertex payload from my vertex shader. And I'm going to take a vertex payload in on my fragment shader. I should probably talk about 
Oh, also my fragment shader is going to output something. I should probably talk about these double brackets, these square brackets here. So I use the keyword vertex and fragment to qualify these functions, but variables can also be qualified. And that is usually done, or well, that can be done via these double brackets. Now, in this case, the variable here named position is being qualified as the official position variable. And what that means is that when I write to this variable under the hood, Metal will take that to mean the actual position of the point on the screen. Also, this fragment variable has been qualified as an input stage. And that is signifying that whatever I output from the vertex shader will be taken into the fragment shader. So it's linking these two functions together. Also for the colors, I'm using half precision floats because why not? It's fun. Anyway, so I'm gonna need to do a little bit of work here. In this video, I'm keeping the task of writing a shader independent from the task of sending data to the GPU. So just to start with for now, I'll do a nasty trick, and that is I will define all of my data. I'll hard code it in the shader. The conventions for position on the screen in Metal are very simple. Our X coordinate goes from negative one to one, where negative one is the leftmost region of the screen and positive one is the rightmost region of the screen. So to put in a position on the left-hand side, I'll just put some negative number. And then for the bottom, again, some negative number. I'm going to put in zero for Z, and you can think of that right now as the depth from the viewer. And I'm going to put in a one. And I'll be talking about that not in the next video, but the video after that, where we do some transformations. But for now, if you've not seen this before, we can just take it as this will be explained later. Okay, so here I've got my bottom left position. And now I'm going to go bottom right. And now I'm going to take center top. Now I'm going to define my, um, grab that, going to define my colors for my triangle. So. Colors are going to have three components, and yeah, I'll go half three. And pretty much as you would expect, right? We have red, green, blue channels, so I'll just put that in there. So I'll make one corner red. Very imaginative use of color here, that's okay. One color corner green, and the last corner blue. We've got our struct that we're passing between our stages. We've got all our data on the GPU hard coded. I think we've got no excuse. Let's go in and do the vertex main. So like I said, I'm not sending any over any data at the moment. I am just going to pretty much do a dummy call. And the only thing I'm going to use is metal has some inbuilt variables. One of those is the vertex ID. That is the index of the current vertex. So think of it as I'm going to issue a dummy draw call, which pretty much says invoke the vertex shader three times. And that invocation ID will be here in the vertex ID. Use that vertex ID to index in and get the positions. Wow. Return that and we are good. And now at this stage, we can simply take the color which has been put in, stick on an alpha of one, and that's our screen. So again, we have this uh, vertex payload, which we're outputting. When we write to the position, that just has the effect of sticking that on the screen, if that makes sense. And when we write to the color, that information can be fetched in the fragment shader and yeah, okay.
So congrats, that's our first shader. All right, having defined our shader source code, we'll then need to make our shader. So the thing with metal, as with a lot of metal objects, pipelines are pre-validated. What we do is we look through our files and you know look through our bundle, pick out the metal files and load them into a library. So we go ahead, we fetch all of that, and then the state of the pipeline is sort of frozen and pre-validated, and then that can be recalled later. So let's make a helper function to build a pipeline. I'll just go to my project and I'll go ahead and add a new file. That will be a Swift file. And I will call this pipeline builder. So for the time being, this will not be the most general pipeline building function, but we can always jump in later and readjust, readjust things as needed. So in order to do this, we're going to need access to the metal device and we'll go through here, build what's called our pipeline state and then return that. So as we can see here, when we come to making libraries, we can actually fetch the URL for the required file from the app bundle on the left, or we can simply make the default library, which will go ahead, look through everything and collect all of the metal files. Let's go with that for now. The next thing I'll need to do is fetch the functions from within that file. As I said, this is not the most general function. We are hard coding the function names and so on for now, but in future, if we need to make this a more general function, it's no problem at all. This is simply taking in a string. We can take in the entry point names as strings and use those, no problem. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to build my pipeline. So I'll say device, yeah, make render pipeline state put in the pipeline descriptor. Now we're getting an error that this can throw an error. And so I'll just wrap this in an exception, which by the way, exceptions are okay in this use case because we're not going to be dynamically creating these. We sort of create them at the start. So that's our creation function that will make a pipeline for us. Now that we've made a pipeline, let's use the pipeline. So we've got our render command encoder, and that's the point at which we are going to bind the pipeline and issue a draw command. Let's go ahead and do that. Or rather, I should say, let's go ahead, make a pipeline and do that. That's okay, it's not too, not too bad to make a pipeline. I'll make a variable called pipeline and then I'll go ahead and build it at this point. So I'll say, yep, yeah, just like that. Awesome. So I've got my pipeline and things should be going okay, except I'm just gonna test to see if I can break it. So I'll go back to one of my function names and I'll put in a bogus function, see what happens. All right. So build succeeds, but we do get an error. And the error says vertex function must not be nil. Hmm. We can actually make this even more explicit by unwrapping the vertex function. All right, okay, cool. So now the error has moved up to the creation point because I am forcing this check to see whether this optional value was actually successful. And it's saying, hey, unexpectedly found nil <clears throat> while unwrapping an optional value. That's pretty much what I would expect. But now I've got it fixed and it is working. So I'm going to go back to my renderer. And now that I have got a pipeline, I'm going to go and use that. So right down below, I've got my render encoder. I'll say, hey, render encoder, 
let's set the render pipeline state. Awesome, so now we're using that shader. And then I'll issue a draw command. So draw primitives. The primitive type will be triangle. So just put a dot and triangle. Vertex start and vertex count. I'm just going to start it from a vertex of zero. I'm going to run for three vertices. So this is setting the range for that vertex ID that we had in the shader. We can go ahead and run this. Fingers crossed, hey? All right. So have a look at this. This is very strange, isn't it? Fatal error. Unexpectedly found nil <clears throat> while unwrapping an optional value. But I'm not unwrapping an optional value, am I? This is an indicator that I should clean my build folder. Very, very important. And now I... Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So it's working. We've got our triangle. And just as a test, I'll go ahead and launch the frame debugger. Capture a frame. And sometimes I need to sort of click back and forth a few times. There we go. Okay, so we've got a frame. And we can see now on the overview, I have got a draw call. A draw call has been issued. You can also see down below, there's these things called insights. So if we're doing dodgy things, sometimes we can get warning messages there. And yeah, I've just been having a look through here. Um, we've got more information than we had before. It's still not super insightful at this point, but that's okay. I mean, we're still just drawing a triangle. Anyway, I'll leave that for now. So there we go, congratulations. We wrote our first triangle, our first shader, really, and we got something on the screen. In the next step, we'll be looking at index and vertex buffers. In other words, shipping data into our shader so that we don't have to hard code it. All right, so I hope to see you there and all the best. Have a good one, bye. So think of it as I'm going to issue a drummy. Uh, I'm going to issue a drum.